Avalanche devils, hurricane Fearing Buckler Rangers, Bruins, Maple Leafs It's a Buckler The goal of many Is that cup of Stanley Welcome, everyone, to the newest episode of Here in Puckburg, your place for the daring do bad and good puck tales. I am your host, Shaggy Von Doom, with another episode of Puck Tales. Woo! And the you know who at the other end of the woo woo is one of my good friends, one of the OGs that I got to meet from my other podcast, the other job I get to do. Um, Bailey Curtis, co host of the Searchcast. I believe you do writing as well. Mm-hmm. What don't you do, Bailey? <laughs> There's a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> it's an abs. It's a first of all, it's an absolute honor to get you on here in Puckburg. It's an honor to be here, honestly. Yeah, you are. You're one of the OGs. You're one of the real ones. Mm-hmm. So I, it's absolutely awesome to get you on here to share your story and like talk some hockey with you outside of the context of a live game so yeah first of all nice to finally get to have the conversation i know yeah and let's 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 take this thing right back to the beginning to the origins <laughs> where did where did hockey make an impact for bailey so i have played soccer all of my life uh since i was what four years old and uh they don't do goalies in the uh like little leagues whatever Mm -hmm. but as soon as i got to like u8 u10 that's when goalies were kind of starting to be introduced and i had told my coach at the time it was like the last game of the season um hey i might be interested in doing this and something happened with our goalie and he was like okay go in um and i a little bit of context before this, maybe it wasn't me talking to the coach before that game or during that game. It might've been like the game before, but I had told my dad, I was like, my coach potentially thought about putting me in goal. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm freaking out here. And my dad told me the wonderful story of Cam Ward. Mm-hmm. Uh, 06, uh, Con Smythe winner. Uh, beautiful human being uh for anybody who might be following me on twitter he is my profile picture he became a huge idol of mine for that reason and for that reason alone uh told me cam ward's an absolute beast in goal we call him cam the dam the brick wall when you go in goal if your coach ever puts you in goal embody that embody cam ward and so going back to the last game uh like Five minutes left in the game. My coach is like, okay, we've got no gloves for you, but you're going to put on this penny and you're going to go stand in goal. I was like, okay, cool. Shaking nerves. I only had to make one save and I didn't even touch the ball. I ran the uh, forward out uh, for a goal kick, which was great. Um, but One for since- one. Yeah. So, (laughs) um, (laughs) after that, um, I kind of started asking my dad a little bit more about hockey um, started getting into this. Mind you, I'm in fifth grade at this point as well. And I'm, I'm asking my dad about hockey, asking about the game. The cane sucked when I started getting into them, but I loved the energy. I've always been a sports girl with my dad, even though hockey is really the only one I super pay attention to a lot now. Um, but my dad started taking me to a few games here and there. Um, we had neighbors who were also big fans of the hurricanes. So they kind of fostered my love for it. Shout out to Dave. Um, and, Hi Dave. <laughs> but yeah, so they, they really helped foster my love for it. And now I'm here. What about the, so was the canes at the time your local team? Yes. So I lived in North Carolina for the first 18 years of my life. And uh, once I graduated, my mom has wanted to move out to Colorado for forever. Uh, So once it kind of came time to apply for colleges, I applied out here, got in. At the time, I wanted to pursue exercise science in athletic training um, and have since kind of changed that major a little bit. But I 
got into the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs, which Colorado Springs is Olympic City. I was like, mm -hmm. where better to study exercise science and athletic training? Uh, we made the move out here literally the summer after I graduated. It was a super quick decision. But yeah, from North Carolina to Colorado. So tell me about the local hockey scene in the Carolinas first. Like you were up to 18. Was there any kind of local hockey scene at all? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, 2018, 2019 was just kind of where the hurricanes kind of kind of started getting a little good. Mm. Um, but even when we sucked, even when we were in kind of our playoff drought, whatever, um, we it, like the tailgating scene, first off, is the first thing that comes to mind. Um, tailgating, as you probably know, is a huge thing in the South. Yep. Um, so there, there would be times where games didn't start till five. We'd be there at noon, uh, mm. just setting up chairs like, in, or behind our car parking lot was huge. So people would just kind of set up chairs, grab beers, grab drinks, make food, bring their smokers. And it, it's like a whole community type feel. Um, and ever since the hurricanes have made, started making the playoffs ever since Rod Brendamore kind of started come er, and kind of came onto the team and took that head coach role. Um, the community's just grown and grown and grown, uh, from what I remember it becoming a fan, like middle school. Now I, we both kind of grew up in the South mm -hmm. and I know it helped to have a hockey team there. But I know what the environment is like. If you say you're a hockey fan in the South, you're met with some resistance. Mm -hmm. Like, why is it not football? Yep. Uh, how? What tie was it? Just the Cam Ward? What? What tie helped you, like, stay true to hockey? And what propelled you through? What was? What really pushed you when it came to your love of hockey? I think really my the or it my big reason for sticking with it was it was something my dad and I could both get really really mm. passionate about. Um, their sports is like the big thing that we have in common. Our personalities are very similar, so we both have similar reactions to the sport. Um, and it gave us and just one of many other outlets just to kind of have time together and uh do do things with each other like he my my brother's not a big sports fan so he didn't act, uh, necessarily have that uh stereotypical like son to play catch with yeah. or things like that like my brother did play baseball at some point but now that he's uh matured and he knows what he likes uh he's that's not his scene anymore but yeah. sports has always been a thing that i've shared uh with my father so, um, and it, like I mentioned, the neighborhood group that we hung out with all the time was uh, big in sports. Uh, one of their sons, who I still consider like a brother to me, um, he's like a little brother. He was super into hockey. And so that's something that we shared as well. Um, and even though like a lot of my school was big in like college basketball, college football, yeah. the Panthers had their run with the Broncos way back mm -hmm. when where freaking Cam Newton, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, so, I mean, it, it's something that, like, I, I was always very proud in it, even though I may have been one of a very few who was like, I, I knew people that, like maybe one or two people that played hockey that traveled all the way to Raleigh from my uh, kind of area, which is like 30, in 30, 35 minutes east of Raleigh. Mm -hmm. um, I knew a few people who traveled out there to play hockey, but there weren't many of them. Um, and before, like I said, the Canes were not that great. So there wasn't really a big opportunity unless you were like a diehard, like I'm going to stick with them, even if they're bottom of the league kind of teams, whatever that are, are fans. So, and you mentioned the move from North Carolina to Colorado. Mm -hmm. Talk about the hockey scene, well, especially this year. How does it differ? <laughs> well, no, I'm not talking about like comparing the two teams. No, no, I know. I'm talking about is there a difference? Do you feel more of a vibrancy? Can do you miss anything about the Carolina fandom? 
So kind of refer referencing another point again, the tailgating is definitely something I miss because it's not that common out here. Yeah. Like I said, tailgating is like a super Southern thing. Um, and so you, you don't really see much of that out in Colorado, especially with the big city vibes because Denver's yeah. a heck of a lot bigger than Raleigh is. So yeah. um, you, you've got people who are parking and walking to the game you don't see many people kind of hanging out beforehand that's the one th and that's the biggest thing that i notice it, it it does feel like a community and especially this year i mean yeah. just look at the parade like the parade yeah. was awesome i got to go to that it was insane uh, um but it like it, it's just because I think I was a part of it out in Raleigh and I didn't get to experience it like most of playoffs. Like I was there for maybe one, or the first time they made playoffs since their drought. Yeah. Um, and that was it. And the fandom has grown a lot in Raleigh since here. It's a lot. And it just because it also too, Carolina is a Sunbelt team, whereas mm -hmm. Colorado is not. So ice hockey is a way bigger thing out here in uh colorado than it ever was where i was so you I, I i've definitely seen a bigger audience get into the sport than i did in carolina um so that that's kind of my differentiation there and, and you know that's funny you mentioned that because this march um i went out to the new jersey devils versus the avalanche game mm -hmm. um Ironically enough, it was my first ever NHL game that I've ever attended in my life. <laughs> and I got there stupid early because I'm used to college football. Yep. Where the game is at 7, that means you show up at 9 a.m. Yep. <laughs> and I was... Oh, no. I, I was so shocked to see, like, where are the tailgates? Like, yep. where are the tents? Mm -hmm. Like, where do you eat? Mm-hmm. Like, it's funny you mentioned, like, with all the pomp and circumstance that everybody thinks about with Colorado right now, uh, like, growing up in the South, like, you handle game days a little bit different. Oh, yeah. And I, I found, that, like, that was something that stood out to me. Like, I got there super early. I was like, well, I guess I'll go to the team store or mm -hmm. I guess I'll look around the arena on the outside until they open the gates. Right. But there's really nothing to do before the game. So that was a weird adjustment for me. And it, it's not that not tailgating takes away from the community aspect no, of it in no. any sense either. Um, it's it, like there, there's different ways of showing it, I guess, uh, in each kind of geographical location or differentiation when it comes to the NHL, which I think yeah. is really, really cool. Yeah, it, it's just it was I found that funny because that was the one thing I was like, oh, when I went <laughs> to a game, I was like, I guess as Southerners, we're just like everybody tailgates right but like it almost makes you feel a little dejected like i i'm the most diehard fan here come yeah. on <laughs> like okay i guess i'll wait like everybody else but <laughs> it was something i had to adjust to as well but yeah. like so where did you honestly get your start with hockey media or hockey like i know you're a huge canes fan mm -hmm. like i completely get that and we're going to talk to canes in just a minute um but where did you uh, where did you get your start in hockey media? So uh, and it was honestly just recently too. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's been within the past like five years, um, and that's when it because I yes I was a Canes fan, but it, when I'm in middle school and high school, like I'm it, it, like a girl stuck in the high school kind of stereotype, whatever. I didn't get as into like players and stats mm -hmm. as I I am now. Um, I just knew, yeah, I'm a Carolina Hurricanes fan and screw all the other teams out there. Like that's, I, I care about my team and that's it. Yep. Um, and uh, within the past few years, it was like the year or two before uh, playoffs or our mm -hmm. playoff streak started happening. And I listened into games and found that John Forsland was a mm -hmm. huge idol for me. And just listening to him, like he's got some iconic lines, that's hockey baby, yeah. uh, and things like that. And he, he became a person that I looked forward to watching on uh, broadcasts every Canes game day. Um, and when he was, when we didn't resign or take care of his uh, return contract and he went to Seattle, my heart 
broke. Yeah. And uh, Trip Tracy and Mike Maniscalco took over. And yeah, they were fun to watch, but it started getting me into, okay, what's going on in his neck of the woods? And at this time, it, like I'm out in Colorado. Um, there's another team that is now my home team. What's going on with them? Um, what's going on in my division? What's going on in my conference for both teams? Yeah. And uh, just kind of being able to look up to people and focus on that player and stat aspect that was so new to me was really, really cool. And then I kind of, uh, or I, I found Zach's podcast mm -hmm. on Twitter and it, like he, he'll be the first to tell you. I mean, I not to brag, but like I, I am an OG supporter of the podcast. I found it before there was an, a first episode, before there was a logo, when it was still in its kind of building up process to that first episode. And that's where that kind of media coverage and me looking more into that media coverage kind of started to foster. And uh, then I met you and all the other great guys and er, and girls in the Locked On Avalanche space. Uh, Grant actually asked Beth, was like, "Hey, <laughs> Bailey might want to intern. What they what does she do here?" So he kind of like uh, sparked that for me. And Beth was like, "Go apply, be a writer." And I was super nervous and applied and ended up getting in because writing's been something that I've loved my yeah. entire life. So to be able to take that love of writing and put it towards something that I am very, very passionate about was really exciting to me. And then Zach got me on the podcast for the first time. It was, it became the longest episode in Surgecast history. And then that was kind of overtaken with another podcast I was on with a friend of ours, Joel. And um, he saw how well that two hour long episode did was like, Hey, you want to come be a co-host? I was like, heck yeah. I want to become a co-host. And yeah. That's and I know Zach. I know Zach real well. Um, we used to do a show together. So yeah. yeah mm -hmm. he's a, he used to be lamplighters together. Uh, so <laughs> you, next time you talk to him, say your former lamplighter said, hello. And I will smile. And you know, he's also a resident of here in Puckburg. He also shared his mm -hmm. story on here. So yep. I know Zach real well and Beth love them all like absolutely. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm honestly like we met in the locked on avalanche Twitter space, but I'm so stoked to see where you go. Like I, your hockey knowledge is incredible. And like to see you, like when you're talking about that awakening to like how everything operates, instead of just watching like Carolina versus whoever comes into your building or whoever is on the other side of the verses, like, why are they there? Why is this scary? Why are we going to beat them? Mm -hmm. Like once you start opening up your view of hockey in the league and start following personalities and players, and you then develop that interest and that hunger. Mm -hmm. You want to um, know more. You want, you, you will take in every bit of information. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how everything was with a lockdown avalanche thing. Um, mm -hmm. I was a fan of Chris, like, from maybe like his third or fourth episode and like mm -hmm. i would always like talk to him and then eventually it kind of led into the same path that you did but like you have that like okay i love this sport but the way i'm taking it in now is not enough i right. need more and you're like actively searching out for more and that's where um like shane gilfoyle i think he's like episode seven or eight of this he came on and told his story like his history of hockey podcast it's probably the most influential piece of media into why I'm here today okay. because of his love of the game of hockey and not just like putting it out there, just telling you the history and long form, just almost audio documentary style. It's okay. Incredible. And um, like you said, you're in the writing now. Like I, I'm bringing all this up. We have very similar paths. That's why I'm so excited to watch <laughs> you like really like blossom and grow in this because this is like right for you and you're going to do incredible. Like the, I used to write, uh, like I used to do stuff for, uh, I used to write for mile high sticking and okay. it was one of those like write for the abs and 
my brain just thinks of things different. Like when they mm-hmm. say do a hockey podcast, what do I do here in Puckburg? We're, t- <laughs> we're telling hockey stories. We're not breaking yep. down the news. Um, so when I did Mile High Sticking, I did a whole historical series called Why Not Us every year. Like that was a playoff hashtag that we used to use. Why Not Us when it came to the avalanche in the postseason. Yeah. And I used to document every year, like a year in review of every year the avalanche didn't win the cup. Okay. So it was like, it was weird. It was quirky, but it was just different. Like, so it's like, cool though. Yeah. It's, like it's unique. And I feel like as a writer, that's exactly what you want because that's what draws people to your content. And like, that's why I'm so excited to see where things are going with you. Cause like you said, like, yes, I've gotten into this in the past five years, but like when you hear you talk about like your origins with the game, like why you're into the game, like it's heart, like the, it's a heart thing. Like mm-hmm. that's the stories that I love the most. It's it's not just a um it's not it's not just yeah, because my friends like it, I guess I do too. Go canes. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> like you love it, you ingest it, like it's your heart's tied in it because it's something mm-hmm. you can share with your dad. And like there's memories tied there, and you want to be like Cam Ward. So there's like heart and soul into it, and then like the crave for information has got you to where you are, where you are now the source of information. Right. And like, so to see this path is it's incredible. And we're, we're about to talk canes in just a second, no. but like if, if um, Bailey, I will say this now is a absolute incredible follow. And at, at the end of the episode, we're going to give out where you could follow her. I highly suggest that you do because she's, she's up and coming. She's going to be great. So you have to give her a chance because I, I said so. I appreciate that. No, and it's it's really inspirational kind of hearing you talk about all that, and like your history and your backstory and whatever too, because you're kind of in the same boat as me where I'm at now, where you're a Colorado Avalanche fan, but you don't live in Colorado. So it's one of those things like you still find these ways to do these unique things and spread the news as somebody who's not a resident of the state where their team is located. Now, I mean, I used to live in that state I spent, or in the state of North Carolina, I spent my first 18 years there but I don't live there anymore. And to be able to say that they're still my favorite team and to want to be able to cover them. Like it, it's something I definitely look up to you a lot in that sense. As I'm well. uh, I'm going to break it to everyone that listens to this podcast and our conversation right now in a way that everyone can understand. There is nothing in the NHL bylaws that say you have to live in the state to be a fan <laughs> of the team in the state. Yep. Like they're, the gatekeeping in hockey is one of the things I have sought to destroy. Yes. I do. And it, I'm talking on every level. It's why um, our recent guest, Cam Connor, was our first like NHL guest after we had three or four PHF stars. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to hear the men talk. I operate differently. We're going to let the women talk. <laughs> like I want to hear the PHF stars first. Yeah. Like I, I will, I do not do like, I'm a member of the HDA, uh, the hockey, like diversity with like Nas Godry. Like mm-hmm. I, I do not do gatekeeping, whether it's race, uh, gender, any of it. Yeah. If, uh, when it comes to fandom, I don't care how much, you know, where you live, why you do i i don't i don't i don't put up with it like so it's why another reason why i love your story that you are extremely passionate about the canes even though you're not under the like perfect canes umbrella like you are Mm -hmm. still developing and giving like premium canes content and total stick taps to you i appreciate you thank you and (laughs) i'm Enough about like tooting your horn here. Tell me about the canes. Like, what do you want to know? It's interesting. Like, the Avalanche finally win the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. That's great and wonderful. And they're like kind of setting the standards on how teams should be constructed depth wise. Mm-hmm. Why couldn't the canes go any farther? They're equally as depth. They they have very good depth. 
Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say, I, I'll say they are similar to the Avalanche and that they do have depth, just their depth is a little bit different because we don't have scores like mm -hmm. Nazem Kadri. We don't have scores like Nathan McKinnon, like Gabriel mm -hmm. Landeskog. We don't have a generational talent on defense like Kale McCarr. Yeah, that, that guy, but... we can, I'll make him. <laughs> it makes it a little bit different. but make, Just a little bit. Um. <laughs> Landis Goggs comment at the parade. Do you guys know the con Smythe? That's yeah. yeah. oh, hilarious. Anyway, but so our, our depth in each of those teams are a lot different. Mm. Um, and the system that Rod Brindamore runs is he doesn't want like you don't you don't see like 40 plus goal scorers, mm -hmm. uh 50 plus goal scorers on our team. You see guys like Sebastian Ajo, like Nino Niederreiter, like Vincent Trocek, who are putting up 20, 30 goals. And that the scoring is a lot more spread out mm -hmm. versus uh, when you look at the abs, you see scoring from like top guys. You'll see it trickle down just a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's not as spread out. Yeah. Um, and th so there, there's that. There's that aspect. Uh, Grant would be yelling at me if I didn't bring up the fact that we couldn't win at home or and couldn't win away. Win yeah, yeah, we, we couldn't win on the road during the playoffs. So that was a big issue. And I think that has a lot to do with how reliant we are on energy. Because mm. I, I like I, I still stand by this. PNC is one of, if not the best uh, barns in the NHL. We were the loudest house in the NHL at one point. I don't know if there's anybody beating us at the current moment. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if the abs kind of had that. But many, many players have said in their first start interviews that the teams re or, uh, like they rely on fans energy to win games, to uh, perform the way that they do on the ice. And when you don't have that on the road, there's not, and there's that sense of it, like there's that crutch that you don't have. Um, so that's an aspect. Uh, I would also be remiss if I didn't mention our power play. Mm. Our power play absolutely sucked. Um, we did have the number one penalty kill in the NHL this past season, like during the regular season, and yep. that totally went out the window during yeah. playoffs. And I think that's kind of what kicked us as well. All right. My two questions going forward. One, this is a middling question just for my own curiosity. The Canes don't share PNC with anybody, do they? So that is the same arena that the NC, uh, NC State basketball team and the NC State ice hockey team use. Hmm. Okay. So it is technically a college arena. It's just college basketball, college teams in general are a lot bigger in the South. So we have bigger arenas than what you kind of see Arizona occupying right now. Yeah, they really. <laughs> low. Um, I was just I'm wondering if that had anything to do with the um, the raucous environment with it being kind of that that college type built atmosphere. I wonder if that has something to do with like the just the vibe and the at, like. The acoustics. <laughs> I, I don't think so. Uh, like, not, I, not in my opinion, but like it's I, I just wonder if it's like I'm not saying like Carolina's not rowdy. I just wonder if it's like a helpful contributing factor. Well, I'm and I mean sure, I guess, because I mean you've got college fans out there who know how to cheer for sports. So maybe I wonder if it's a southern thing. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. That's it's because you like you hear like I've heard the same thing about Ball Arena. Mm -hmm. I've heard it get loud, and like I've heard and seen it get rowdy. But I've also heard that like it's weird. You hear all the Southern teams, like Nashville gets rowdy, Carolina gets rowdy, Tampa Bay you, a little bit, maybe a little bit, and like Florida a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it's just it's weird. You hear it there, and I was just that was for my own curiosity. Mm -hmm. The big question is like with that avalanche canes comparison how what do the canes have to do for this upcoming season to because honestly watching the canes in the regular season and yes i i watch a lot more hockey than i let on on my <laughs> other show i watch a lot more hockey than i like to admit um i watched a lot of canes and they had <laughs> yeah you know i do what i do they uh they have this they regular season let me put that asterisk on there 
they had this like championship DNA. Like they had that mm-hmm. feel, like a swagger, like, okay, they're built a little bit different. They could make some noise and turn a series that they shouldn't. Come playoffs, they did not. No. What what needs to be done in Carolina to honestly get get the league's respect? Colorado just earned that when they mm-hmm. never got that with all the players that you mentioned, like, yes, they should win this with Kale McCarr, Gabe Landis, Gognath, McKinnon, and la di da di da but they were never respected. It was always Tampa and Vegas for some godforsaken reason. Tam- uh, Toronto, all these other teams are getting respect. Edmonton always gets respect because of Connor McDavid. Mm-hmm. But when they get swept, it's always what they didn't do and not what the Colorado Avalanche did. Mm-hmm. Carolina is also suffering that problem. Like they have some very talented players Mm -hmm. and they should be going farther. What do they have to do to go farther and earn respect going into next year? I, in my personal opinion and other fans may have a differing one. um, Consistency Mm. is my biggest issue. Um, Cause we had a great start to the season um, with our what was it? Nine games, 11 game winning streak at the beginning of the season. Like we, I think went uh, further than any other NHL team when it comes to winning streaks. And we kind of dropped off after that. Um, And we have these situations, especially on the road where it's kind of, I feel like a lot of it's kind of that energy issue as well. It's because they don't Um, tailgate. That's what it is. Yep. Yep. (laughs) There's not that energy coming into it, but um, like it's really, I think a consistency issue. Um, The, uh, or the hurricanes have a similar issue that the abs do um, when you're so in the second period, you are very familiar with this. The abs tend to kind of let off the break. And that's where you sometimes see the avalanche, the worst of avalanche hockey. Um, the hurricanes have that similar issue. It's just, we're not consistent with our inconsistency. Mm. Um, and so, I mean, usually our inconsistency and our worst play comes out of our first period and our second period, and you see it and them spike it up in the third. Um, but it's, it's really like, sometimes it almost feels like I'm watching two different teams when it are on two different game days. Um, so I feel like that consistency aspect is going to be huge next year. Um, something else that's really going to need to happen this next year. We have a lot of spaces to fill, uh, due to free agency. Um, we just lost Tony D'Angelo, um, in a trade for draft picks to, uh, the Philadelphia Flyers, (laughs) which you're not going to see me crying about that, but well, not talking, not get into that too much. Um, but so, but in losing Tony D'Angelo, we also lose our biggest offensive defenseman. Um, we don't have that in many or any of our other defensemen. Um, personally, it's not a huge issue to me because he was more offensively minded, I think, than he was defensively minded. Because when you're paired with a guy like Jacob Slavin, who can clean up your messes the way that Jacob Slavin cleaned up Tony D'Angelo's messes, it helps. Yeah. And you can afford to make those kinds of mistakes. And that's where I'm personally a little it, like it, it's maybe this is coming from bias. Jacob Slavin deserved to get a lot more recognition than he did this season mm. um, just because of that. Um, but yeah, so that inconsistency aspect and we do need to find some good guys to fill our free agency spots. Um, and honestly, like there, there's good guys you can get through free agency or bringing up your guys from the AHL who will fit well under Rod Brendamore's system. It's just being able, because something that I talked about on a podcast with somebody else, it's something that Rod Brendamore even said that might benefit the Canes is having a 40 plus goal scorer. Somebody brought it to my attention that that, that may not necessarily be the case because somebody who's a 40 goal scorer on a different team may not be that under the system that Rod Brendamore runs with his players, just because as I was telling you before, you you see scoring distributed all throughout all four of our lineups just because we don't run lineups. We run yeah. lines. Like, we, yeah. yeah, there's arguments you can make about yeah. a guy being a fourth line player or a first line player, but yep. that's not really kind of how we run things. I see that. Yeah, so. that, that that makes a and you are you still the checkers of the no. So we have the Chicago Wolves. I believe the checkers are oh. with the Florida Panthers. 
Okay. Which okay, that makes, makes zero sense to me, but you know. I, I will never understand <laughs> why affiliation goes the way it does. I, we're spoiled in Colorado. We have Loveland right up the road. So. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see what the Canes do next year, and I would love to see you guys get a little younger. Who wears your captain C? Uh, that is Jordan Stahl, and there's potentially he potentially alluded that this next year might be his last year. Interesting. So yes. he's in his 30s, I believe. I just wanted the I wanted that to be stated in the uh, podcast for all those that kind of follow the Canes. This is something to watch out for next year. Yeah, so. I mean, and, and it, it's it's interesting to me too, given how much trouble we have had or have had, because we do have a really young core of guys. We are mm-hmm. a very young team, so even though there are some people who are like with with the trade that just happened, like oh this trade is going to be the end of us. We're not going to be anywhere close to a cup in the next few years just because of this. I mean, our guys have a lot of room to grow. Yeah. Um, Your window is very wide. Yes. (laughs) So. Compared to a lot of the other teams in the league, your window is wide as long as you're building the right way. And I believe Carolina is trying to do too. Absolutely. So, hey, Bailey, I don't want to keep you here all night. But tell everybody how they can find your writing and your podcast. So um, I am most active on Twitter at uh, Bailey Curtis, and that's Bailey with two Y's. Um, Whether it's hockey, whether it's personal stuff, I love chatting up a storm. Definitely come check me out. Uh, Shoot me a DM uh, at me. Whatever it may need be, uh, definitely come check me out there. Um, I am also not as active on Instagram, but I am trying to be. Uh, you can catch me at Bailey Lynn Curtis. Uh, the podcast that I run with my lovely friend Zach Martin, uh, The Surge Cast. You can find that at The Surge Cast on uh, on Twitter. We are getting ready to start up a YouTube channel here soon as well. So go check that out. Um, As to my writing, I have not yet released my first article, but it is coming soon. Um, And go definitely give Belly Up Hockey a follow and you can Mm -hmm. find a bunch of that stuff there. Well, everyone that is also coming from the Surgecast side. Hi, tell Zach. Everybody go tell Zach that Shaggy said hi. It'll make his day. Um, (laughs) And I'd like to thank you all for stopping by here in Puckberg this week. If you would also like to follow our show, it's H Puckberg on Twitter here underscore in underscore Puckberg on Instagram. Um, you can follow us on YouTube, which is where we are right now. I'm wearing a devil's Jersey. You have to see it with your own eyes. Um, but Everybody yeah. on YouTube can see my hurricanes Jersey in the back. She's got <laughs> jersey. This is crazy. But, um, I would like to thank everybody for stopping by this week here in Puckberg and Bailey, once again, thank you for sharing your incredible story. And I, I hope everybody get, goes by and follows Bailey and Surgecast because they're doing incredible work over there. Yeah, I appreciate you allowing me to stay in your wonderful establishment. Thank you. Oh, you know, I've <laughs> been working on the place. It's been a while. It's been, it's been a long season. I had to get in here and do some cleaning. You've kept up with it well. <laughs> you know, like, and we will, and for all the listeners here in Puckburg, we will see you all next week. <laughs>